So thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here. So uh, um, I'm Giorgio Costantino. I'm the Global Transformation Services Lead of CRIF. Uh, I don't know if you, some of you know CRIF. It, knows, it is not a brand of biscuit, but it's a global company. <laughs> it's, a, it's a global company uh, which is uh, dedicated to, um, uh, to uh, data and analytics. And uh, it is a, a global data company. I represent the, uh, I try to use uh, this, so it's uh, only two words about CRIF. CRIF is a global company, more than 40 country-based operation, uh, about 1 billion. So we are reaching, our CEO, my, my direct report, uh, is telling to me that he aims uh, at uh, reaching 1 billion. He's a private company, uh, he's a company dedicated, uh, as I said, to data. Uh, analytics uh, and uh, growth, uh, the growth of Chris has been done through the acquiring, the inorganic uh, growth, uh, acquiring data companies around the world. We have a strong presence in Asia, we have a strong presence in Europe for sure, in Middle East, and uh, uh, we have been awarded from some several, uh, um, uh, several institutions. But I don't want to spend some time is about CRIF because I have 15 minutes to speak about sustainability and ESG. Maybe I, have, I am the only one who is speaking about this in a digital and AI um, conference like this. Um, let me say, guys, I, I'm going around the world to speak about uh, only ESG in this period of time. In October, I was, I were in, I was in Taiwan. They are, they are very interested to boost this. In Singapore, with the Monetary Authority of Singapore, um, they, are they are developing a data lake. Uh, the institutions are very scared about the future of, 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 the, of the planet. And the banks are the main, let's say, uh, actors, potential actors to the evolution. Uh, very briefly, because I have 15 minutes, I want to pass to you some very, very uh, um, uh, important messaging, messages. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, climate change is now. Uh, is something that is happening. In May, we have in Emilia Romagna more than 8, 9 billion of damages. In, uh, um, in Greece, in September, more than 4, 400 millions of damages. Uh, in November, again in Tuscany, in Italy, more than, than, than 50 million of damages. And these are only some of the examples that we can do. You may know that this is a, absolutely something that we, we need to approach in some way. What does it mean this for financial institutions? Uh, this is a slide that the ECB representative that I personally invite in Taiwan to speak to the institutions of Taiwan presented to say, hey guys, you have to do something as a financial institutions. And first of all, it's a very didascalic and I very apologize for that, but uh, uh, it's, it's important to me to have the same level playing field to discuss with you. Uh, a bank grant a loan, okay? Very simple thing, this is the commercial activity of each bank. Uh, due to local fruit, a grant a loan with a collateral. Due to local fruit, an example, uh, the company buildings, is, it might be destroyed. The value of the building decreases, goes down. And so if the company defaults, and this is the core business, guys, of the, of the, of the potential of, the, the, of credit, you have the transition from the physical risk to credit risk. This is quite simple, but this is the business. The ESG risk is that one, first of all. And this is the focus also of uh, uh, ECB and of... Uh, um, not only of ECB or the other institutions, ESRD, for the companies, to the taxonomy. The first one point for the taxonomy alignment is the physical risk. Which are the impacts? We measure it. As I said before, we are a, a data company. We are working with several banks around the Europe. And this is a simulation on a portfolio. The LGD, maybe you know that loss given defaults, is the, the, the best proxy of uh, the, the, the expected loss of a bank. And uh, so we measured it for three kinds of portfolios. Uh, a consumer, a, a small medium enterprises, and corporates. And as you, as you may see, in all those portfolios, you may find that the high flood risk exposure let, 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 uh, get a higher LGD. 
This, these are costs for the banks. And so to be very pragmatic, all of your CEO, if you are part of a bank, CEOs, have this in mind with their board. They have to understand how to manage this as a risk. It is not only something as branding, because as you know, all of you must show in the pillar three the, the level of exposure in terms of, the, of, of risk, but it is something that you may show to, and each CEO must show to the board of directors because it's affecting the balance sheet. And for that reason, ECB is asking to all the banks in Europe, and it is the great booster. So the, the reason why I invite ECB to speak out of Europe, it is because our booster in Europe is ECB. ECB is, it says, must, must take a forward-looking, comprehensive, and strategic approach to consider climate-related environment risk. And ECB told to a Taiwan financial institution in October, guys, we asked to all the banks by the end of 2024 that you have to include all the remaining expectations, including in capital adequacy and stress testing. In practical, the three main targets for ECB are the calculation of GHG emissions, the calculation of transition risk, this is very crucial because you have to understand the cost of the transition, okay? And so you need to understand all the companies to which you are lending money, you need to understand if they have, they have the money to, to, to finance the transition. And this is the reason why the financial institutions are, are crucial in that passage. And finally, but last but not least, this is the first point, it is the degree of exposure to different, let me say, natural periods, heat stress, float, and so far so forth. And in that field, uh, we work at a lot, we work on all of those, but I have no time to expose to you, and we are, we, I will be more than glad to expose our, all overall our methodology. But I will focus by some, the, this uh, uh, five, ten minutes left to show you some cases about our methodology on uh, uh, physical risk. This is the first case. Uh, we are developing a data lake all around the world, mainly in Europe, but we are exporting this data lake also in Asia. And in Asia, in Taipei, this is what I presented uh, uh, three months ago, uh, we did several, let's say, uh, um, several uh, experiments. And first of all, uh, these are two companies. Two companies uh, exposes both to extreme winds. The distance from one company to the other is 1.5 kilometers. Okay, and one company is located up to a hill. The other company is located surrounded by building. Okay, you, say, you may say, simple, but you need to know. <coughs> and so the title of this, of this slide is The Power of Granularity. Mm -hmm. As I said, uh, we are a data company, so we are strongly focused on the oil of the future, data and analytics, and so we are working on that. So the link to me between AI, digital, in some cases it will be climate and uh, related uh, analysis and forecast and forward looking, boosted by ECB. Uh, another example, I mentioned before the big float that we had in Emilia Romagna in Italy, about 9 billion of damages paid by us, ex tax payers, okay? Because in Italy when you have some kind of, okay, please raise your hands and the government asks the taxpayers to pay, okay? Uh, as a bank, we did a, as a CRIF, and we, we, we showed to all the banks we are working with in Italy, we did the back testing. And the back testing was that you, can, you may see that the, the floated area is the, the orange one. And the, the blue area is what we forecasted before. And so what we found, it is almost no 95% of the buildings identified as low risk were, were, were as a low risk to be floated, as no floated. Okay, have not floated, have not been floated. And so if you were a bank and you had this kind of buildings, you were not being, being affected on the higher LGD that I showed before. And this is crucial. This is the power of data, the power of analytics. A, a professor and a senior advisor of ours, Professor Andresta, who, who is advisor at the UE Parliament, told me several times to know to decide. 
And this is the power of, of knowing something. We need to know which building to finance, or in the second case, in the case of buildings that has been, have been frauded, to hire the price of our products as a bank. Final, uh, the final example I show you it is in Greece. We are working a lot with Greece. We are we have been serving with these indicators the, the first two banks of Greece, uh, and we are approaching the third one. You know that in Greece we have four four big banks, and uh, we first of all we analyze the maps. We have a partnership with a very very strong uh, um, little company, Red Risk, with which we are developing this kind of max, maps. And so, for example, let's say th these are two examples, the Napulia area, the Nechori area in, the, uh, in Greece. And so we, we, we are able to know the area with bushes and wild trees and expose it to wildfire. Or we are able to know in Nechori area uh, the areas close to the rivers, expose it to flooded. For what? To understand the potential impact in the next 20, 30 years of the uh, extreme events to a country, to buildings and to companies. And let me know, let me say the, the great, the, 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 the most important thing it is that you may know this if you can combine analytics with data. We are doing this kind of passages with all some, a lot of institutions. I mentioned this, uh, monetary authorities of, uh, of Singapore. I mentioned the Taiwan. We are doing something also in Italy and in Europe. We, are, we have been surveyed at the European Investment Bank as well. Um, because it, the crucial thing, it is to have the possibility, the granularity of where the company, where the buildings are located, and the analytics and the, the in terms of forecast models to understand the impact if some kind of extreme events will happen. Conclusion. This is the last thematic review that ECB does last year, did last year, sorry. And uh, um, the, the, the red area was the, 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 the level of maturity of the banks in 2025. One, if you know the red area is lowering in 2022, the final thematic review, I, and I will, uh, I, will, I will share with the organization of that organization when we, we will analyze the final one, uh, it will be absolutely better. But the, the red area is still very big. What we are doing as a CRIF, you saw the results of physical risk, uh, but overall, our framework is composed by two main components, the information pillar and the evaluation pillar. Not only a questionnaire. We, we have a questionnaire. We have a platform to collect data directly from the company. What the, company, what the companies uh, told me when I asked to the C-level of the companies, OK, how I can ask to my suppliers to, to, to fulfill the questionnaire? It's not easy because, let's say, there, there is it's not mandatory. And so we started from banks. And so banks, but ne banks need to evaluate the portfolio. And so we, we start with the data lake of indicators, KPIs. I show with the, one of those, the physical risk. But we have more than 140, 130 now are 140 KPIs, uh, analyzing public um, indicators in Europe, mainly retrieved by Eurostat, but also um, our own indicators, because as you know, we are, we are a network of business information. And we have an evaluation pillar. So we combine the qualitative and quantitative data to finally have, uh, to finalize this score. In, in Europe, we, are, we have been, uh, we, we have also a rating agency, the CRIF rating agency. And so we are also able to issue specific uh, rating. So you know the differences between score and rating. So we are able to do both. Uh, the, result, the result of that is, is, is that picture. It's very, it's very, uh, it, it's very synthetic. But we, we, we are able to score entire Europe. Um, in EU, EU and 27, we are able to provide a score with different characteristics around the world, around the Europe. Uh, frankly speaking, we are working a lot uh, 
uh, with the physical risk. Okay. Uh, there is a curiosity about France. Uh, France is, is green because nuclear is considered green. Mm. And so they are very strong in nuclear. Uh, finally, uh, I stole you some minutes only to show you a video about our platform. It's the commercial one, it is not my way of communicate, but let me say, it's the institutional one. If, if it is work, I don't know if it's work. I try to show you also this one. Yes, it's working. It's working. But I don't know if the, what else sounds, the audio, I don't know. Oh. Maybe it doesn't, doesn't... You can put on the laptop and then we'll Could you put the sound cable? The sound cable is with the plug-in. No. no. <laughs> is there sound cable? And some work. Anyway, it's, it's a video that... <laughs> there was a... Ah, oh, it's different. <coughs> To, to, to conclude my presentation with the, uh, with the, with, with the tense of, of, a, of, of a person that I estimate a lot, that it is not anymore uh, the chair of the supervisory board. We conducted him, we have a, a, good, a very good relationship. You know, Griffe, as I said before, is an institution in several countries. We are, we are a credit bureau, and so we are very next, very next to central banks. And so we have this kind of relationship, like, like uh, the one with Andrea. Andrea was the chair of supervisory board. He committed a lot, a lot, uh, to try to ask to the board of the banks to, to finance the transition. Uh, and I personally believe uh, that, uh, as I said before, uh, the way to, to, to uh, evolve it is uh, to have the best way to know to decide. And so, and to know to decide, we need to do a, a, a sort of system, an ecosystem together, banks, institutions, we as data company, as analytics company, uh, companies, we are working a lot. And so, uh, Andrea told that, uh, that so is a challenge, is for sure a challenge. And uh, so we need to prepare, and so for sure financial institutions could be the driver and will be the driver for the evolutions. So, thank you very much for the time. Giorgio, thank you. Um, are there any questions for Giorgio? Yes, I 
Okay, let's let's move on. I am conscious that there's a bit of uh, time. Ah, sorry. I don't. Yeah, I need them. Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends because what what you are doing with the with the platform, it is to collect real data, okay. Uh, and so we are we are we are collecting more than ten thousand data around the Europe with our synergy platform, and this is absolutely, as I said to the C level that I met, meet for for the client meetings, uh, it, it's it's a path. It's a medium run path because you need to collect data from the companies. Um, for that reason, we worked a lot and we are still working in some estimations. For example, the, e, the GSG estimation uh, is an estimation driven by our knowledge of the company because as a business information company, we know where the companies are located we know the level of turnover of each company, and so we have a, a good proxy of the level of emission of each company. And this is the starting point. But for sure, when we will collect and we, and we will collect and we verify the level of emission declared, we will try to match the two. And this is a process for all of us, guys. It's very difficult to have, okay, your company Fulfill the questionnaire, okay, and also the qualitative is, is, is to be, uh, let's say, checked. Um, one point, when I went in Taiwan, I met several system integrators that told me the future is not the questionnaire. The future it is to be connected to the ERP of the companies directly, to collect directly the, the bill of electricity, the bill of water, okay, and this is the first one. So. I imagine a future, because this is a future uh, conference, where we will have for sure some estimations, and also to answer your question, the physical risk will be always an estimation. Always an estimation. And you need to work with, we, we can work with Cliff, but we can work with other. I personally think that we have a, a very level of granularity. I was with a partner uh, in, on Monday of a, of a big four, uh, and he told me, the level of granularity that you have there's no comparison as of now. Sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult to implement because sometimes there are several competitors of ours that are doing this physical estimation at the portfolio level, not company by company, but we strongly believe that the future and ECB is asking the detailed approach. So it's costly, but detailed approach. So to answer to your question, some, some, some data will be collected, in my opinion, and also, with a comparison with other, compet with other, uh, uh, other competitors of ours, we think that like PwC, uh, UI, and so other advisors, uh, we know that we, we, we believe that the future will be that some qualitative data <coughs> will help us to tune the quantitative one. So the one collected from system integrators, the one estimated for physical risk, and finally you have the qualitative one to tune as is coming up with the with probability of default for, for, for Basel II, for example. Thank you, Georgia, for an answer. Thank you very much. Thank you.